There's a huge amount of controversy with the barch grown diamonds and I can guarantee you that the average diamond buyer who may have a tester to show the difference between moissanite and natural diamond but does not have a laboratory grown diamond tester and they just don't want to know about it because they're afraid they bought one and they don't have the tools to test it so Gary has helped design and prototype this incredible instrument and we're going to interview him about it. Gary L pointed at the instrument while you talked okay, about it. Okay, okay. So we've been manufacturing testing equipment for diamonds for about 12 years now and we have diamond testers as well, standard diamond testers. What we've got here is a diamond tester which can also test synthetic CVD HPHT diamonds. Um, plus it'll also additionally test moissanite. Um, we've made it very compact. You can fit it with uh, normal AAA batteries, or you can uh, use a USB to the main socket like this. So once it's all plugged in, it's very simple, very easy to use. Does it use software on the computer, or is that just for the power source? No, it literally, USB. we're just using a, today we're just using a standard power bank because okay. it's convenient. So, Great, okay. Yeah, but it, it, it runs for quite a long time on uh, AAA batteries, so it's, not, it's nice when you're out and about to put in your pocket. Uh, turn it on, it will calibrate first. And when the green light's ready, nice and simple, you just pick up a stone and place it table side down in the center of the circle. Pop the lid down, press the button, and wait for the result. So it's bombarding the gemstone with a frequency wave, I presume. Yes, it's using an ultraviolet frequency, which is measured on the other side of the stone, and then is programmed to, to know how much light has passed through the stone. And CVD and HPHT lab-grown diamonds both have this, a similar signature, the lack of nitrogen signature? Similar, and this will detect the difference between both. the two. So it won't tell you it's a CVD or an HPHE. No, it won't. It won't tell grown, you that. No, it won't. It, it won't. Do, yeah, it won't. Do, it won't distinguish between the two. Right. I'll just do that one more time. So you press the button, a few seconds, and it'll go red for the CVD HPHT. For the diamond, it will. Um, if I can get it, grab it there. There we go. <laughs> so you put it directly over the tiny aperture, which is about a. It's, is that about a two millimeter aperture? It's less than that. It's, less it's, than that? It's about 1.5, I think. Right. Uh, pop it in there. Now it'll do uh, two pointers right up to 10 carat, and it'll do colors uh, uh, through D to M. There you go, blue for diamond. So, okay, so it'll do D to M. It colors. Do... It can do outside the scale, but sometimes it will, um, might, you might want to test it twice. Okay. It, yeah, it, it's 98 percent accurate within that scale. Now that's interesting. When you say that, 98 percent of all natural diamonds have nitrogen in them, and the other two percent don't. Yeah, that's why. Right. So yeah. that's why it's 98. Right. Yeah. Okay, that's right. right. And then they've got a nice big moissanite here, which I'm just going to do the easy way. Pop that on there. And the genesis of this invention was obviously born of necessity, but um, you, I mean, you spearheaded the project of making it? There are other versions of this on the market, but um, we've worked with several gemological associations and gemologists to get it absolutely right. Plus, we um, added the additional moissanite testing, which we work well with on our other testers. Our other testers, we specialize right. in testing moissanite, so yeah. we incorporated that into this as well. Awesome. Also, this you'll find this tester will do really, really difficult synthetic stones. Synthetic stones that are made really well will always show as CVD. And your, your business card? Where, where is that, Gary? Okay, so we, this, is, this is our business card. Dikai Tools is a manufacturing factory. Um, it's a British-Chinese-owned company. Uh, it's been running now for over 12 years, and um, the branding is Gem True, which is here. 
you, mm-hmm. and you can find that you can find this product on gemtrue.com our retail store you, you were selling this in vegas at jck two weeks ago that's right we were we sold out actually we sold did out you really? everything in vegas yeah how many did you sell judy how many did we sell in vegas uh, well, 35. 35 35 pieces in vegas 35 yeah. pieces yeah, yeah, in yeah, vegas. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah, great okay well that is a deeply needed gemstone detection instrument that it amazes me that the diamond dealers don't have a lot of them don't have it at this stage and uh, when you know there were 48 diamond laboratory grown diamond booths in Las Vegas last year there were 20 and the year before that there were seven and every year they're doubling their production yeah but yeah they're doubling their production every year that's right and it's the 900 pound gorilla in the diamond market that no one's aware of. And we, we're, we're working on a project where we can, uh, this is for loose stones as you can see. Right. And everyone's saying, well, what about mountain stones? When these stones get onto exactly. the product, how can yeah. I test them? Yeah. So we're currently working on uh, a, a different type of pen type tester right. that will um, be able to test mountain stones. That makes a lot of stones. sense, so, huge amount of sense. Yeah. 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 At this time in 2019, with the advent of large scale lab grown diamond production, Mostly coming out of India and China, it is obviously apparent that most high street diamond dealers and many larger scale diamond jewelry suppliers do not inform the customer that the diamond is lab grown or some of the diamonds are lab grown. And don't purchase the uh, gemological instruments to accurately tell the difference. Historically, for smaller diamonds, it has been more expensive to test the lab grown CVD or HPHD diamonds than the value of the gem itself. This is now not the case with instruments such as the Gem True Veritas Lab Grown Diamond Tester. The important relevance of an available inexpensive ultraviolet absorption, absorption spectroscopy instrument will change dramatically as the outrage from the diamond buyer grows while an informative education about lab-grown diamonds permeates the gem buying market. But even with gem testing instruments, it is important to understand its limitations. The first target market for lab-grown diamonds has been the small cut stone Mali market, which is the very small diamonds one sees in channel set rings and not the main solitaire stone and are often well below 0.25 carats. However, in recent years, this has changed as labs have mastered the art of growing much larger crystals that can be faceted into five carats or more even. On a weekly basis, tens of thousands of lab-grown diamonds are entering the market without the diamond's nature being disclosed at the retail level. In an industry that relies on integrity, One can assume that this could decimate the investment potential of the industry. CVD or HPHD diamonds cannot be considered investment grade gems as their supply is only limited by the level of demand likely to grow due to their lower costs. The high-tech industry needs perfectly grown hard crystals for semiconductor and optical applications. Not surprisingly, It became a big part of the evolution to create clear colorless diamonds for the $16 billion a year diamond marketplace. From an atomic point of view, they generally are grown in such a perfect manner that this is the clue that gives them away. 96% of all natural diamonds have a different fluorescence or phosphorescence under an intense ultraviolet or infrared light to show an inclusion of about 2% of nitrogen. It only seems logical that of the over a hundred labs growing diamonds around the world, one of them will discover how to include random nitrogen and boron atomic fixation into the crystal lattice in a similar way to their natural counterpart. But up until this date, that discovery, as far as we know, has not been made. This nitrogen atomic fixation, which is actually a flaw or inclusion in the natural diamond carbon-based structure is discovered with infrared testing which can rapidly discover the features 
of the Moissanite CD CVD HP HD diamonds. It can also be discovered with ultraviolet testing, such as this instrument we showed earlier. Nitrogen is the most common impurity that enters the natural diamond structure. Also, boron can commonly form in natural diamonds. If they aggregate in the atomic lattice, the testing is more easy to discover. Visually, naturals often have a characteristic inclusion or flaw that indicates their nature. Under 10 power loop magnification or even a microscope, lab grown crystals tend to be so perfect that they can only be tested with a ultraviolet or infrared light to alert unverified suspicions. GIA, or the Gemological Institute of America, has been studying how to identify and separate naturals from lab-grown diamonds for over 47 years, and can even analyze sealed parcels in lots of over 2,000 carats all at once. It is believed that naturals take as many years to grow deep in the earth while lab-grown diamonds grow rapidly in as little as 200 hours. Lab-grown diamonds have a place in the market, but it is always much better if their description can be accurately disclosed at the time of sale. In every step of the sales process, as the gem travels to the retail market, lab-grown lab diamonds are made of the same material as natural diamonds, pure carbon, crystallized in an isotropic three-dimensional form. In the United States, the Federal Trade Commission has indicated that the terms laboratory grown, laboratory created, and the manufacturer's name created would more clearly communicate the nature of the stone rather than the misleading term synthetic. While lab-grown diamond sellers emphasize the green, non-conflict or non-blood nature of their diamonds, the natural market will emphasize the rarity, which actually is greatly based on their artificial limited release to control the market. Both sides have a weakness in their approach to a balanced perspective. And personally, I would not be buying a diamond as an investment stone with knowledge of how ingenious scientists can be in developing their crystal growing art into the future. If I was to invest in a gem, it'd be one of the varieties that is not viable to attract artificial atomic reproduction, such as a Chrysoberyl cat's eye that haven't yet been imitated exceptionally by the laboratory grown crystal process or some of the other rare colored gemstones. Thank you very much for your time.